passion for photography and traveling took me to this land already five times in the last 10 years. It's difficult to express in words why exactly I love India, why I'm so attached to a land that gave me the most unforgettable moments of my life and that feels like a second home for me. I've always been attracted to this culture, the tradition and values, the spirituality, the diversity of the places that go from the beaches in the south to the incredible Himalayas in the north. To arrive from one region to another is like to land to a new planet every time. And I so much love the food that is the soul of this country. Sometimes it's not that easy to travel in India, sometimes it can be challenging. There's a constant craziness all around you, all the time. There is always something happening, something going on. And at the end there's nothing to really see, but it's India itself that is looking inside you. But the thing I'm attached the most are the people, who are the most memorable I ever met. Most of them are simple, generous, honest, gentle and full of dignity. And the way they welcome you, their tolerance towards all religions and cultures is unique. During my long journeys in India, one of the entities that most caught my attention are the sadhus, the holy men. Sadhus, meaning good men, are devoutly religious Hindus living all over India. Most of them wear orange clothes, representing the color of the fire in which they had borne all the procession to be symbolically reborn into a new life. An order that dates back more than 5,000 years. My main goal, however, was to understand, to see what knowledge and experience help sadhus live such an isolated life. And to do this, I had to live as closely as I could to their lifestyle. That was the only way to get the intimate portrait I was looking for. I felt and I knew that each one of those faces had a story to tell. And to be able to tell that story, I needed to live close to them. There are four to five million sadhus in India today. Most make their pilgrimage across the subcontinent and many of them feel the need to stay close to the waters of the Ganges River. the living and divine river in the Hindu-Indian society. A lifeline to millions of Indians who live along its course and depend on it for their daily needs. That's why I decided to cover all the 2,500 kilometers of the Ganges, which rises among the ice in the northwestern Himalayas in the Indian state of Uttarakhand and flows all the way down, emptying into the Bay of Bengal, where the river meets the sea. It took me three trips to India to complete this project. Each journey lasts from a couple of weeks to a month. I visited 19 cities, traveling through many of the northern regions, by train, by bus and riding an old motorbike. A long journey ended in the massive festival of Kumbh Mela in Allahabad. The Ganges journey started in the Himalayas, precisely in Gomuk, the Gangotri glacier that is the source of one of the primary head streams of the Ganges river. Ah. <sighs> 
got a big tent. I'm coming back from the from Gomuk, from the glacier. It was a really long way. I didn't didn't expect it. And I'm also running out of energy, and it's it's getting dark now. So it's better if I if I run. I'm in Deprayag, that is one of the most famous places of pilgrimage in, uh, for the Hindu devotees in the whole India. This little town is famous in particular for the confluence of these two rivers that you see here. Two important rivers that come from different parts in the Himalayas and that uh, meet here forming the Ganges, the Holy Ganga. find many sadhus up there. Only very few spend their lives meditating the loneliness of the high mountains. But the ones you are able to spot and get close to, because of their appearance and the surrounding they belong to, are the most precious. A bit sad. I yesterday I returned the bike, but from now on I will continue with the train. That is another thing that he, uh, in India I love so much. The freedom that the motorbike gives you is unique, of course. But I'm sure 100% the best way to discover India is on a train. It's an authentic and also a very cheap way to get to know the people and the cultures from, uh, from very close. Looks a bit stressing and complicated, but when you find your seat, it's fantastic. Banaras, known as Varanasi, the oldest living city in the world. This place and what it represents is one of the most beautiful things I have ever seen in my entire life. It is one of India's oldest and holiest cities, important to Hindus because it's dedicated to the god Shiva. Pilgrims travel for days to immerse themselves in the sacred river. Hindus believe that dying Varanasi releases them from the eternal cycle of life and death reincarnation. People's dream is to come here to live and to die. 
This is definitely the place with the largest concentration of sadhus. They are everywhere. One of the key things when you are analyzing a project like this is spending time with the people you want to portray. Get to know each other to gain each other's trust. Every day I sat down and talked to them to understand the reason why they had left home choosing to wander on the street for their spiritual path. Why they decided to own nothing other than walking sticks and donation pots, spending their lives to move on the streets feeding on the gifts of devotees. A lot of times it was hard to explain to them what I was trying to do, why I wanted to portray them to tell their story and share their spiritual path. Why I wanted to do in a certain location and why in a certain time of the day. Things that, yes, for a photographer are the keys for a good image. And at the end, the last part of this trip, the Kumbh Mela, one of the largest human congregations on the earth. A festival held every 12 years, that this time over a two-month period, attended an estimated 120 million pilgrims that one by one took their holy dip in the river. More than 2,000 years old, the festival is a meeting point for the sadhus that arrive from all over India and set up camps near the river where they pray, meditate, give blessings and do yoga. This was the last chapter of a very long journey. Sometimes it was tough, but uh, at the same time I had the chance to experience incredible moments. I can't believe I could accomplish something I had in mind and work on it for many years, and I'm so excited and happy I'm finally able to share it. Mm -hmm.